Hello and welcome to the Digital Assets Report. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange and with me today, Jalik Jobanputra, uh, the founding partner of Future Perfect Ventures. So, welcome. Thank you, it's good to be here. And of course, Vince Volonari, CEO of Temple Markets. Always great to have you here. My delight, thank you, Jane. And so, Jalik, tell us about uh, Future Perfect. When did you found the company? What is it? What are you doing in the space? Just Give us an overview. Well, it's a venture capital fund that I launched in 2014, officially. I've been a VC since 1999, and I saw a bunch of gaps in the VC landscape that I wanted to fill. Okay. Um, and one was that I felt like we were ripe for a next kind of evolution of technology. Uh, in the 80s, we had the PC. In the 90s, we had the internet. And I thought, we're ripe for something else. And I also have a very global background, so I was thinking, you know, what, what's happening on a global scale in terms of technology and, and what's happening is that there's so much development happening all over the world. Uh, we're getting uh, more processing power. Um, and I started digging into Bitcoin in 2013 and I thought, gosh, this could be the basis of the next technology the evolution. Next okay. and, and that's how I started investing in the blockchain space. Uh, so I launched the fund in 2014. We seeded a lot of the leaders in the space, um, and we're now investing out of our second fund. Okay, and Vince, you have you guys know each other, right? Yes, so, I and you had the great pleasure of meeting Jalak uh, at different UN events when when she spoke. And, um, and, and what I love about this conversation, it, it makes things actual, right? So, going back to the earlier VC days when there were very few women running VC funds, and outperforming and doing an amazing job as Jalik has done. How she's bringing uh, women in finance forward and now women in blockchain and the crypto community. So it, it is this intersection point. And, and I have to read these, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I usually don't use the notes, but some of these accolades, I think you know, the, the, the readers have to understand who Jalik really is. You know, institutional uh, investor, top FinTech deal maker in 2016 and 2017. Top five investors pioneering the blockchain. CB Insights top VC funds in all of blockchain. 2018 Microsoft Top Trailblazer Award. And th there's, there's more to go on, but I, I don't <laughs> want to make you blush too much. But this really sets the standard of what Jalik is doing and her vision not only to see blockchain coming and crypto and the change that it could have, but how do you make it actionable? And I think that's that differentiates 80 and 90 percent of the people that are talking about things, but those that are actually doing it. So kudos. Well, thank you very much. And some of the areas that you've been working on, so let's just go through these one by one. Crypto asset infrastructure. Now, do you mean like that's a, you look for companies that are involved in that space? Okay, and what do you mean by infrastructure exactly? Well, what we saw happen over the last year in 2017 and into 2018 was uh, the proliferation of these token offerings. Mm -hmm. uh, so Bitcoin was the first uh, cryptocurrency. Um, and then a few years later, after Bitcoin was established, uh, Ethereum did an initial coin offering, and that was in 2014. Um, and, and what happened last year is we saw thousands, or maybe hundreds, but it, it's now thousands of cryptocurrencies launch these token offerings. We've seen Wall Street primarily stay on the sidelines because there's still a lot that needs to be built out in terms of custody of assets. These are digital assets, so we, we need to figure out how do we keep these safe. Uh, there have been a lot of hacks with exchanges. We also have lots of exchanges from around the world that are localized, and, and so you'll have a, a crypto market in India, and you'll have a crypto market in Hong Kong, and one in the US, and they're not necessarily interfacing with each other. So how do you have efficient liquid markets? And, and so what's exciting right now is that we have a lot of really smart entrepreneurs, some of them coming from Wall Street, who are building this infrastructure that will allow more institutional interest uh, in, in the sector. Okay, I mean, that's really interesting. And I know, Vince, you've worked a lot on the kind of regulatory side of it. And that kind of needs to still be worked out, right, before this becomes the industry that it could be. Well, you know, and I fully agree with Jalik. When we look at the, we'll call it new market infrastructure, the plumbing, right, when you move from the world of cryptologists, the great work that's been done in, in pioneering the space, 
it's a different engagement when you're bringing in an, an institution, someone with, with a fiduciary responsibility. That's everything from your anti-money laundering, your know your customer. But it's, it's about having uh, approved counterparties. It's the clearance, the settlement, the depository, the custody after the trade. So I think as we get those right, and, and it is that convergence of great technologies and folks that have had regulatory experience that are creating this, and I think that's going to be the floodgates of new flow of capital yeah. coming in once that comfort is there. Well, if we're truly going to be a global economy, we need to kind of move money a little more efficiently. Yes. I mean, it can take weeks to get a deposit from overseas, whereas like right. cryptocurrencies you can get quickly. And that was um, when I went to that first Bitcoin conference in 2013. Uh, that's where I got goosebumps. <laughs> um, I was born in Nairobi. I've lived around the world. I've invested around the world. And uh, I've seen that there's still 2 billion people who are unbanked, completely unbanked in the world. There are um, billions more that are underbanked, including in our own country. Um, uh, after the credit crisis, uh, banks stopped lending the way they had been. So uh, there are a lot of people who don't have access to financial yeah. services. And, and so on one hand, we've seen a proliferation of data. Uh, so more information about all of us that can be used to assess our credit worthiness, to as assess trust. But then we have these kind of clunky financial institutions that were built in the 20th century. And we can combine the data and then technology and then Bitcoin and blockchain technology that was built to transfer money peer to peer with very low fees. Um, and that's really the next stage of where financial services is well, headed. Well, I think when people kind of scoff at Bitcoin, I think they forget the glo they forget to look at it in a global way. Yes. They just think, oh, why would I use that instead of a dollar to buy a Starbucks coffee? But they don't think about the unbanked and the transfer of money globally and where things are going. Well, yes, and when I send money abroad, it's $50 for that wire. And it okay. kind of seems silly in this day and age mm -hmm. to have to pay that much. And, and um, banks are just ra 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 raking up up these fees oh, yeah. that if you really look at what's available in terms of technology, it's not really necessary. And, and putting more money in, in the pockets of consumers and small businesses is good for the global GDP. Yeah. Now, another area, enterprise blockchain. So that involves more than just cryptocurrencies? Yeah. So I started my venture career in 1999 out in Silicon Valley for Intel Capital. And I was focused on enterprise software investing. And that was the first wave of when companies were moving supply chain, logistics, software over to the web, web-based systems that were more open than just uh, these kind of more dumb terminals that ran software. Uh, so I'm seeing that same evolution happening with blockchain. So now, instead of all this data that's locked up in these databases, which was better than you know, what was happening uh, pre-internet, but still too much data locked up, we can start opening up that data so trade partners can, um, uh, can uh, interact more freely with each other. So a supply chain provenance, I can track uh, an item uh, from, say, a farm all the way to the retailer and, and know that where that, that produce has been, what conditions it was grown in, how long it's been sitting on the shelf, and then it's a database that any enterprise partner can check into. Um, and, and regulators can also. So, so it's a more uh, 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 visible uh, system uh, open to more partners, and, and that's that's the promise of, of blockchain and the enterprise. Now, what's a website if somebody wants to get more information about Future Perfect? It's uh, futureperfectventures.com. Okay. We have a weekly uh, newsletter uh, with my commentary uh, that you can also sign up on the site. Awesome. I'll sign up for that. Thank you so thank much, you. for joining us. And Vince, as always. And thank you Pleasure. as well for joining us on the Digital Assets Report. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. Have a great day.